All right, good morning, everyone. <laughs> good morning and happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday of your Thanksgiving week. Um, hope you had a good night of sleep. Hope you started this day off well. And I hope you know that the Lord loves you guys. And his promise of peace is with us each and every day and is renewed um, each and every morning, as it says in the book of Lamentations. Um, if you guys are, are ready for this morning's uh, morning manna, as always, we like to encourage everyone to turn their videos on. Um, those that are here with us that are Zoom and uh, those that are, you don't need to turn your videos on if you're watching this <laughs> via live stream. But um, uh, I think we're going to have a really interesting study today. Um, we won't be long. Hopefully we'll be done by 1030. But I think this is something that the, the Lord was really laying on my heart this morning. And I think it's going to be a blessing. So um, before we do, why don't we... Um, since we're in Thanksgiving week, why don't we, um, if you're, if there's just something, man, I want to praise God. I want to give God thanks for something. Uh, just unmute yourself and just share it with us. Um, um, yeah. What, what is, what's something you're thankful to God for this week? I mean, um, this week being Thanksgiving, but what's something you're thankful to God for? So this morning I read Psalms 91 and it just reminds me of his protection for us all the time. So I commute. So I always say, I'm so thankful that I make it back home and to work safely, no accidents, not pulled over once. And there's a lot of work on the 99. So just thankful for his protection. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, you know, we've gone to different calls on the 99. So we know that, especially around that area. So praise God for Psalm 91, right? Amen. Anybody else? What's something you're thankful to God for this morning? What's something that there's a praise just kind of emerging? Or maybe it's a sacrifice of praise, you know? But what's something you're like, man, I don't want to rob God of glory. Um, I'm thankful to God for this. Um, I just want to say I'm thankful for God for the opportunity to fly home and see my family for Thanksgiving. I'm super excited. My dad just saw his 60th birthday, so I'm thankful for his health, for my health, my family's health. And, you know, it's just amazing, you know, just to be in good health and be able to just come together. It's my favorite time of year. And um, I'm just so excited just to sit down with the family and eat and, you know, just talk, you know what I mean? Because especially with all this everything going on, you know, we have a new normal, but I just want to get back and I can't wait to be home and just be with the family. I'm very thankful for that opportunity. And hey, man, <laughs> praise the Lord for that, right? Thank you for sharing. Yeah, family and spending time with friends and your community is, yeah, that's a blessing. Um, eat and fellowship. Eat is, eating is, connecting to, is connected to worship a lot of times in the Old Testament, right? The feast days where it was eating and there's other days where eating was connecting to worship, connected to worship. So um, anybody else? What's something you're thankful to God for this morning? I'm thankful for um, an opportunity to witness to my friend. Um, she comes from like a Buddhist background and she came to an Adventist college, like not knowing what Adventists were. And then she started hanging out with um, a group of us and two of us are Adventists. And recently she asked for a Bible to like read on for her own. And then last week there is um, this opportunity to win one of the remnant study Bibles, the one with LNG White quotes. And she actually won that. So like, I'm really happy to like be able to ship it out to her. Amen. Praise the Lord for that, right? You know, I appreciate you sharing that Kathleen, just cause I have a burden too when you have non-Adventist, non-Christian students coming to a Christian college, it's, that's a mission. God's called us to reach out, to be friends, and he, he, God is, God has brought them, and he, he wants you to play a role in helping them move along, so praise God for that, right? It seems like the Lord is really working in that relationship and that friendship there, so anybody else? What's something you're thankful to God for today? I'm thankful to God for his mercy, um, for his peace, for his provisions, um, especially this year with how uncertain things have been. God's been, God's been good, and he's showing that he's still on the throne. Yeah, he is, right? 
in the midst of everything that's happened, he's given us so many promises. He's, he's, he's definitely on his throne, right? And that's why we don't have to fear when things are going crazy all around us, right? Amen. Amen. Angie said she's also thankful for a great relationship with her son. Amen for that. Anybody else? Don't want to cut anybody else off. There's one more. What are you thankful to God for? What you, what's, what's something, man, in the midst of Thanksgiving? Here we are. Um, yeah, uh, even if it wasn't Thanksgiving, it should be Thanksgiving, right? Um, thanks living, right? That's what it is more. You know, I'm, I'm personally just, just thankful for um, the way that God has led throughout this year and just the privilege of being part of the community here with you guys, even though it's all virtual. Um, the Christian community, people can be separated from miles apart, but because of Christ, we're family, right? And so I'm really thankful for that. Why don't we start with the word of prayer, and then we'll get started with this very interesting study. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you so much again for this morning. Thank you for the promise of your Holy Spirit. And God, we're, we're praying you would bless us, encourage us, set before us new paths. In Jesus' name, amen. Very cool. So um, we've been going through a little bit through the book of Nehemiah, and uh, the we've been learning about Nehemiah. Yesterday we talked about Nehemiah, the joy of the Lord is your strength, and today we're going to talk a little bit more about Nehemiah. I think this is going to be really encouraging. Um, what's really interesting is the walls had been built, and worship services began, celebration of what God had done, and now looking forward to the future. Uh, there was a time of signing the covenant, uh, but there was some more work to be done. Before we go there, I want to share with you a verse, and I want you to tell me what you think it means, okay? It's a verse that's found in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 18. This is what God says to his people um, as they're about to go into the Holy Land, okay? It says this, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. Let me read it to you one more time. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant with you, which he swore to your fathers this day. That's Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. From there, we're going to go to Nehemiah, but I want you guys to see this. I want to read it one last time, okay? For, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. The children of Israel were about to go into the Holy Land. Moses is speaking these final words. What in the world is he talking about? What do you think that verse means in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18? It is he who gives you power to get wealth. I think what the verse is saying is like God gives us the means to be successful and in order to fulfill like the promises that he's given to us. Yeah, I like that, right? He gives us the means, right? Maybe it's good health, right? Uh, maybe it's a sound mind, right? It, the Lord gives those blessings, right? And those blessings in turn can be used to, to increase, right? Anything else? Anything else? Uh, what you think that verse might mean in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18? For it is he who gives you power to get wealth. I mean, you know, we've all heard the uh, saying like health is wealth. So maybe we could be talking about wealth. I mean, health is wealth because um, that way we can, um, it says that we may establish covenant. So that we may, I guess, like focus on him and we can fulfill 
this problem is just this. Oh no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe there's more to the word wealth than just uh, um, mere just money. Maybe it refers to life, your character. In Proverbs, there's a, a real connection between wealth and character, right? And influence, right? Uh, maybe it's just the, the wealth of your health, right? Uh, the freedoms that you enjoy, the abilities, the capabilities, right? That, that's part of that. Anything else it might mean? For it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he might confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. It's God who gives power to get wealth. Well, when I read it, I think like in order for us to receive the power, we need to first remember that he is God and place him first and do things so we won't receive that power to get wealth if we don't remember. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, because it says that he may confirm his covenant, right? The power to get wealth must be used in conjunction with, with help building up the kingdom of God ultimately long term and both short, uh, immediately, right? Uh, there's this idea that, that the building of wealth must be tied into the building up of God's kingdom, right? We, that's excellent. And that's important for us to keep in mind, right? In that verse, it's not just God gives you the power to get wealth. It says that he may confirm his covenant. Money reaches its highest values when it's used for the glory of God. I want to say that one more time. Money reaches its highest value when it's used for the glory of God. I, I remember, and like many people, we sometimes live in this tension where we think to ourselves, well, getting wealth, is that going against God's will? We'll read verses like, hey, it's harder for a rich man to enter into the kingdom than it is for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And then we're like, okay, I don't, maybe I shouldn't try to strive for wealth. But then you listen to certain phrases like God says, I will increase you and bless you. And then we're like, okay, maybe he's saying something to us. But then we hear a sermon and we're like, okay, wait a minute, I better just change my mind about trying to make this a focus in my life. But then we're told we need to use all our talents. And then we're like, okay, maybe I can use my money here and this. And then all of a sudden you're just like, you read a Bible study and it's like, and it's like, uh, all of a sudden it's like, hey, don't be selfish, don't be covetous. And you're just like, okay, I'm going to go down here. And then you're just like, you're like, okay, this is great. But then you start thinking, man, I have an ambition. I have some dreams and I think I can make some money here. And you're like, okay. But then all of a sudden you hear that maybe you just coming across and uh, someone's like, you see one of those, you know, someone poor and we're talking about giving to the poor and you shouldn't be, you know, covetous. And you're just like, okay, I'm going to change. And you kind of live in this fluctuating area where you're like, okay, maybe God doesn't want me to get wealth. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. What, well, what? I don't know. I'm going to stop thinking about it, right? Well, I wrestled with this for some time. And I came across this very interesting quotation from Ellen White, my one Ellen White writing I want to share with you, quote from you. And she says these very interesting words right here. And uh, I think they're, they're just, um, I think they're worth me sharing. Let me share this to you real quick. This is what she says right here. She says these words. Hey, boom. Can you guys see this? I hope you guys can see this. The desire to accumulate wealth is an original affection of our nature, implanted there by our Heavenly Father for noble ends. Let me read this one more time. The desire to accumulate wealth is an original affection of our nature implanted there by our Heavenly Father for noble ends. God gives the capability to get wealth, and God gives the desire. The desire for wealth comes from Him. But the end goal of wealth is what's been corrupted. So I want to say this one more time. The desire for wealth, the original affection was implanted by God himself, okay? God himself, not you, to increase, to grow, to be successful, to be prosperous. The capability to grow, to increase, to be successful, to be prosperous comes from God. But the end goal is what's been corrupted. We use it for our own end. We use it for selfish reasons, uh, for our amb own ambition, our own pride, our own glory. The difference here is God gives us this affection for noble ends for the glory of god and for the good of others right and it's used to help confirm his covenant now you're thinking okay uh, now where are you going with this this is where i'm going with this i'm i'm gonna um i i just 
I want to introduce you to this um, this uh, three tier plan that um, I've been a part of, and I want you guys to really jump into this pyramid scheme because I really think at this moment this is really going to help you. And look, you can be successful and wealthy as me if you follow my pyramid scheme. All you need to do is find some more naive and gullible people just like you. And when you about find, find five or six of them, all you they need to do is find five or six of them. And then you could retire at the age of 29, even though you're 40 years old. Now, this is usually what happens when we hear things like this. Yes, God wants you to get wealthy. Yes, God wants to bless you. And uh, yes, this is what's going to happen. I'm not here to say any of that, okay? I'm not, I'm not here. There's no... There's no, aha, I got a pyramid scheme for you. I want you to buy my product. Aha, there's, I'm, I'm not telling you any of that. There are different ways that God has set out to increase, to gain wealth. Now you're probably thinking, oh, Anel's going to tell us to give tithes. No, I'm not. Anel is going to tell us that we should give an offering uh, besides our tithe, the tithes and offering, right? No, I'm not. I'm not going to tell you any of that. I'm going to share with you what I believe the Lord, uh, one of the ways, no, not the totality. It's not a commandment from God. It is not something that uh, if you don't do, uh, you know, you, you've, you're now a sinner. I believe it's something that God encourages. And I believe that this is a blessing that God pronounces upon his people if they do this. And I really sense God was leading me in this Bible study, but you yourself have to determine whether or not it's biblical. Okay, so let's go to the book of Nehemiah. I want you to see something very interesting. The book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah um, uh, chapter 10. Nehemiah chapter 10. Nehemiah chapter 10. Nehemiah chapter 10. Nehemiah chapter 10, okay? What, what's happened in Nehemiah? Well, we learned that the, the Nehemiah, the cupbearer to the king, through providence, through prayer, through blessing, he led the children of Israel uh, back to this uh, mission of rebuilding Jerusalem. They built the walls 52 days. The walls were huge. The walls were important to the structure. It represented boundary. It represented a definitiveness to Israel for, for, the, for Jerusalem, for the place of worship. They begin to celebrate, they begin to worship, and they begin to relearn and be re-educated in the things of God. And there was also this new mission to rebuild the temple, to rebuild this place of worship, to, to start focusing in on rebuilding um, this focal point of, of, of God's wisdoms and God's ways and God's presence. So, Notice what the Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 35. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 35. Here's, here's what it says. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 35. All right. Um, and we made ordinances. This is Nehemiah speaking. To bring the first fruits of our ground and the first fruits of all the fruit of our trees year by year to the house of the Lord. To bring the first fruit of our firstborn of our sons, our cattle, as it is written in the law, and the firstborn of our herds and our flocks, to the house of our God, to the priests who minister in the house of our God, to bring the first fruits of our dough, <laughs> give me that pizza dough, <laughs> dough, um, our offerings, the first fruits from all kinds of trees, the new wine, the oil, to the priests, to the storerooms of the house of our God, to bring the tithes of our land to the Levites, and the Levites should receive the tithes in all their farming communities. And the priests, the descendants of Aaron, shall be with the Levites when the Levites receive tithes, and the Levites shall bring a tenth of the tithe to the house of our God, to the rooms of the storehouse. For the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring the offering of the grain, of the new wine, of the oil, to the storeroom where the articles of the sanctuary, sanctuary are, where the priests to minister, and the gatekeepers and the singers are. We are not to neglect the house of our God. When you read the books of Leviticus, when you read the books of Deuteronomy, when you read other, other, other books in the Old Testament and even the New Testament, you find out about a phrase called first fruits. First fruits. First fruits represented a special kind of offering. And this offering was taken from the harvest. 
the new harvest, the fresh harvest, the fresh increase, the fresh blessing. And first fruits represented just a, a small portion of the blessing and increase that God had given to you. Now I'm going to ask you a question. When were the first fruits given? When were the first fruits given to the house of God? Was it something done every day? Was it something done once a week, like on Sabbath, when the offering guy gets up? Uh, when, when was the first fruits to be given? Let, let me add a little clue to this, okay? First fruits. The first part or the most important part, significant part of the harvest. Now think to yourself, seasonally speaking, when did this happen? First fruits, the first fruits of your crops. When did that happen? Beginning of harvest? It happened in the harvest time. And when was the harvest time? When? Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. This isn't something that happened every Sabbath. Okay. Bringing your first fruits was not something that happened every Sabbath. Bringing your first fruits wasn't something that happened, um, um, you know, several times a year. Generally speaking, first fruits were brought in the fall season towards the end of the year um, when the harvest was, was being gathered. And because that's when the harvest time is, right? It's 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 in the auto, it's in the fall, right? And it was one time of the year, and it represented them taking a portion of their crops, and the first fruits, the best of it, and they were bringing this as an offering to the Lord. Now, what's really interesting when you study the Hebrew of the word first fruits, um, it's a very interesting Hebrew phrase, and it, it comes from this idea of of a promise to come of a seed to come. So first fruits not only represent the blessings that God has given to you in the past, they represent the blessings that God will give to you in the future. Does that make sense? It, it not only represents the blessings God has given to you in the past, it represents a blessing God will give to you in the future. In addition, it's connected to the great harvest of God's blessings and his, of, of taking his people into the kingdom, um, literally. And you're like, okay, great. What's your point? I'm not a farmer. I'm, we're not living in a growing society anymore. Take your Bible, and this will be our last verse. Go to the book of Proverbs, chapter three. Book of Proverbs is about wisdom. Book of Proverbs was written by the, the wealthiest man in all of Israel, uh, much of Proverbs. Proverbs, chapter three. And I want you to see a special blessing, a special promise given by um, uh, God. Proverbs chapter 3. And uh, Kathleen, can you read verse 9 to 10? Verse 9 reads, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Okay, very good. What is the what is the promise here? What is the promise here? What is it, what is it telling us in Proverbs chapter three? That verse. What is that telling us? When you give to the Lord, He'll um, make sure that you always have. He'll always provide. Yeah, that's there, right? The essence is there, right? Yeah, when you give to the Lord. But is there even more specificity here in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 through 10? Is it, is it specific on some areas here? Specifically giving God the best, okay. your, fir your first fruits, you know. Of your increase, right? Of the blessing you received, right? Yes, of what you own, what you possess. Okay, so this is where it's kind of interesting. 
and and again, you know, you study this out for yourself. Um, but for the last four or five years, for some odd reason, I have always felt this conviction that at the end of the year, I can look back and I can see how I've navigated through my finances, how I've navigated through what I own. And I can look back and I say, okay. And I always sense from God, it was, it was time to give a special offering, not just for the increase, but also for the blessings God's given to me throughout the year. You know, he sustained me, took care of me. His mercy carried me. He saved me from trouble. And, uh, and I was giving this offering at the end of the year. And then I started reading about this idea that at the end of the year, the children of Israel brought this special offering, this first fruit offering to God. And it was a, a, a blessing, not just of, of an offering, not just of, on God's increase for you this year, but in studying it out, it also represented the harvest for next year the promise to come. God's promise is, hey, when you give of your possessions, and then he says, with the first fruits of your increase, this is not just talking about tithes that you give or your offerings you give weekly, but this was a challenge that the children of Israel were to give and support the, the work of God, the temple of God for the building up of the kingdom so that God's glory may be known in all the earth. And uh, the promise is, hey, your storage tanks, your vats, they'll be filled with plenty. They'll be filled with plenty. What does this mean? Well, I, uh, I, I guess I want to challenge you guys on this idea and take it to heart. And saying, is the Lord calling me to give a, a special offering somewhere in his cause? Um, uh, is, is maybe it's your church you're a part of, or, or maybe there's a, a special cause directly connected to his work. And uh, you, you see this, and um, I guess I want to I wanna challenge you just in doing this as not just this praise, thanksgiving of what God has done for you throughout the year, um, but also as, as a belief in the promise of future blessings as well. His promise is your vats will be filled with plenty. And God can increase you in ways you never expected. And it, it will be seen that um, a life of, of someone who's given this, this first fruits is more plentiful, more successful, more prosperous in many ways than just one, than the person who has not. Um, so I, I leave that with you as, as you're looking at the end of this year, as we're, we're, we're in this, this, this harvest season, right? We're looking at the end of the year, how God has led us, how he's blessed us. I guess I, I want to just challenge you to think, pray about this. Lord, are you, is this, is this one of the ways um, you want me to bless you? And in turn, one of the ways you're going to bless me. Um, and, and I think, uh, you'll find uh, to yourself to be quite surprised by the way that God um, has led. And I think at the end of the day, you're going to realize you can't outgive God. You can't outgive God. Amen? Amen. Um, yeah, God's work shouldn't suffer. God's cause should never suffer. Um, let's think about that as we're in Thanksgiving season, we're coming close to very end of the year um, um, about is there first fruits that God wants me to give? Is there a special blessing? I won't add any more details to that because I think uh, that's between us and the Lord. So why don't we pray and we'll close out this, uh, this morning manna. Father, we just thank you for just a, a year of blessings, a year of thanksgiving, a year of protection, of sustaining us, of increasing us. Thank you, Lord, for so many things. And God, as we're, we're contemplating um, perhaps a, a unique way you want to bless us as we are seeking to bless your cause, Lord, may our hearts be open to that. Um, God, help us to, to always keep you in mind uh, when it comes to our lives and our ambitions. Bless my friends throughout the rest of the day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys, and uh, see you later. So. I got a quick question, Pastor. Sure.
Yeah, so with the first fruits, right? Now, in terms of how we give that back to God, is there a specific way? Because, you know, like, if you're doing it for his work, say if I wanted to give it to a particular ministry or say if I wanted to give it to the church or say if I see, you know, I'm going through like Skid Row or something like that. And you know what? I'm going to buy this much socks or whatever. I want to give it to my brothers and sisters. Like, is there a certain way we can go about that? Or is just as long as it's Christ centered in sure. the way that we're giving? That's a good question. Um, and it's a really, really good question, actually. I mean, my understanding of this, biblically speaking, and it goes along with the, the idea of tithes, right? That's kind of a restricted thing, right? God, God restricts it towards, you know, his, his church, his, his, the building up of, of his name um, in, in very specific ways. Offerings tend to be very generalized, tend to be very generalized. There's not a lot of specificity to offerings, right? Um, and I think with the first fruits, in my study of the first fruits, it seems to be this special offering at the end of the year in praise for all that God has done in the increase. It was specifically tied in to, um, in just my understanding, was the was the work of the temple or the work of the church in um, in, in in proclaiming um, its name of, of building it up. It's not something that should be lacking. Like in Nehemiah, as you're reading it, right? He's like, we should not be neglecting the temple here. This this center point. Um, does this mean, oh yeah, give this first fruits to the, the church for your electric bill? I don't know. That's up to you to decide. But in my estimation, like at least what I'm reading is um, the, the churches of God should not be in a place of, of suffering financially in, in, in how they are going about their service and their, their, their sustaining I, I personally believe that the first fruits should be applied directly to um, perhaps maybe a church's budget um, if, if there's a lack and need. And if there's not, I look for, I sometimes give to churches where other Adventist churches where they're, they're, they're having issues, even though my membership is not there. And I'm like, man, they're there or they're, they're church really involved. They're doing real good work there. I just, I just, I personally feel like in, in just my study that, that the first fruits and the tithe and that that goes up. We have a responsibility to make sure in other things, this thing should not be suffering at all. And maybe there's a portion of your first fruits that goes towards that. And then maybe there's a portion of your first fruits that goes towards, um, you know, maybe in a, a fund of the church. Maybe it's a, a community service of the church to give directly to. But I think overall, in just my understanding, overall as a, it should be directed to the church of God. Um, anything else I think is an offering, but that's something you got to pray about um, and, and look at the verses of first fruits. And uh, I think you, you'll see that it was, it was specifically always tied into the, the Levites and those that were involved in the temple services. Um, like the temple should not be neglected, right? Like Nehemiah is saying. So yeah, uh, but let every man be convicted in their own heart with their reading. So hope that helps, you know, so yeah. Good question, Brad, actually. I've that was something I was I had thought about too, and some other things too. Like, well, how much? How much, right? And uh, um, the 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 thought that I came to, and this is not I'm not telling anybody else to do this, is I I look at my savings and I'm like, okay, a tithe of my savings. That that's what I feel for me personally is uh, first fruits. That's a lot for some people, and uh, that maybe not be a lot for some people. But I, I just felt like, okay, I want to give in such a way where I definitely feel it. You know, like I'm giving, I'm actually giving to the Lord here. Right? I'm not like, I'm just giving some off the top. I got the extra, you know, like I'm giving. So I thought, okay, this for me is an adequate amount. So I just felt like around that area, around 10%, maybe 9 to 11% around there, I'm, I'm going to give um, to the Lord because, uh, and I've already divided up in three ways um, uh, in, in how, you know, the church plant that I'm part of, there's another church. And for me, just like I was thinking about one other fund and I'm like, okay, I think this is where I'm going to divide up the first fruits. So, yeah. And all that I think is up to your conviction, how you feel God's leading you. So something to pray about Brad and St. Lord is, is there something you want me to personally help support and give? Right. And uh, yeah, you might, I, I think the Lord is able to show you 
if, if you're kind of conflicted on this, or you feel like, well, my church is in, in a great shape right now. Maybe there's another thing. So but that's for you to find out. So yeah, good question. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're welcome, brother. All right. God bless you guys.